Hello, Cheap Skaters, and welcome to our YouTube premiere tonight. I'm Kath Armstrong, creator of the Cheap Skates Club, and if you're watching this um, premiere live, it is Tuesday the 30th of March 2021. The year is almost a quarter over. Now, because it's a premiere, I can jump into the live chat tonight and talk to you and chat with you in real time. If you'd like to join the live chat, you need to be logged into your YouTube channel or your Gmail account, and that's a YouTube requirement, not a CAS requirement. If you have a question, please put it in capital letters so it stands out. Otherwise, it may get lost in the general chat and I'll miss it. I'll do my best to answer the questions as I find them. So remember, all capitals. If I miss a question during the show, I'll try and answer it in the comments below. 12 days ago or so, the children's song about the rain kept running through my head. You know, the rain came down and the flood came up. The rain came down and the flood came up and boy, did it. Just over a week ago, the rain came down and down and down and down some more. It didn't stop at all, not even for a minute, for four days. I know this is so because I was in the middle of one of the biggest rainstorms I have ever lived through in my entire life. The rain gauge at my father-in-law's home in Sydney, where we were staying, measured 384 mils in 60 hours. The pool overflowed, the guttering overflowed, the roof leaked, the gutters in the street just ran with water. They were like constant little streams. We had family that were flooded in, in northern New South Wales and we had other family members who were evacuated um, on the outskirts of Sydney. It rained and it rained and it rained. Now, some of you um, may have lived through that like we did or you may have had family members or friends that were living through it. It was awful. Roads were closed. Bridges were closed. Hundreds of schools were closed. The bridges over the rivers were closed because those bridges were underwater. And supermarkets shelves were empty. And the people were not happy that the supermarkets were empty. Now, you all know that I'm a firm believer in keeping the pantry full always. I believe in having a good supply of everyday, everyday needs in the house all the time. And time and time again, I've proved that having a fully stocked pantry is practical. It's wise. It's sensible. I teach how to stockpile. I teach what to stockpile and I teach why to stockpile. And I'm still always amazed at the thinking of people who shop daily or only buy convenience foods or who rely solely on supermarkets to have what they want when they want it. Last week, the rain came down. Flood warnings went out and within hours, supermarket shelves were empty and people were complaining that they couldn't get food. Or baby needs. Oh, yes, I even heard complaints about people not being able to get toilet paper. Folks, it's not stupid to keep a stocked pantry. It is common sense. Even if you live in the city, surrounded by shops. As the people of New South Wales and South East Queensland found out last week, and, hmm, as the people of Brisbane found out yesterday, in an emergency, supermarkets empty and they empty fast. We saw this happen all over Australia just a year ago with panic buying. And some things are still in short supply. 
they're hard to get. The shelves aren't quite full with the regular lines. Now, I watched a woman be interviewed um, for the news and she was going to town. She was very upset about how the supermarket in her town was bare and they weren't expecting any deliveries and she had nothing in the house to feed her family. And I sat there and listened and all I could think was, well, perhaps if she kept even a few days of basic ingredients on hand all the time, she wouldn't have been in that position. She'd have been able to feed her family. Oh, she would be on annoyed that the trucks couldn't get through to make the deliveries because the roads were closed. Um, the bridges were covered by water. I'm not entirely sure what she thought was going to happen. Did she think that semi-trailers were floodproof or whatever? I, I'm pretty sure she didn't understand that. But she was so upset and so ticked off that she couldn't get what she wanted when she wanted it. People, keep a stockpile. It doesn't have to be a big stockpile. Start small. If you shop weekly, then aim to eventually have two weeks' worth of your basics on hand. If you shop fortnightly, then you know, aim to have a month's worth of basics on hand. Then once you've reached that level, as you use something, just replace it. That way you'll always have a stockpile equal to your shopping period. And if something happens, and trust me, things do, like a flood or even another surprise lockdown or you get the mumps or the dog eats the tablecloth and needs emergency vet treatment and you don't have the money to pay for it or whatever, you'll be able to take a breath and know that you're set for a couple of weeks or a month or however long your pantry will last you because that's the way you've set it up. You've been, you prepared ahead. You won't be stressing because the supermarket shelves are bare. You won't be worried about the lines of people waiting to get in. You won't be worried about things being limited, you know, limits on the number of things you can buy. You don't have to build your pantry immediately. You know, you don't have to go out tomorrow and do a huge big stockpile shop and buy two of everything that you use and bring it home and put it away. You you by all means, can do that if you want to and if you have the cash to pay for it and it's not set aside for something else, if that's what's going to make you feel better, do it. But you can also build up your pantry slowly and you can build it up so that it's affordable and you're not going into debt to do it and you're not skimping on other things to build your pantry. You know, when things, I say this all the time, so you must get sick of it, but double up on half price sales. If the cat food comes on sale at half price, double up. You know, if Milo and your kids like Milo, Milo comes on sale at half price, double up. Or Vegemite or peanut butter, whatever it is, tomato soup, tuna, whatever it is. If it comes on sale at half price, double up. It just makes sense. You're saving money, but you're building your pantry and that's giving you a buffer against whatever hard times might come your way. The other thing I would say is only buy the basics that you use. Ingredients are cheaper than convenience and ingredients give you options, folks. And ingredients generally have a longer shelf or fridge or freezer life than the convenience. Look, for example, if you don't like UHT milk and you won't use it, even if you're out of fresh milk, don't put it in the pantry. That's a waste of money and valuable pantry space. And that pantry space is valuable. It's valuable real estate. But if you will use it when you run out of fresh milk, keeping a couple of cartons in the pantry just makes sense. You know, it could be that, oh, goodness gracious me, someone decided during the night to get up and make milkshakes and you get up at breakfast in the morning and there's no milk. You've got UHT milk to use. Saves you having to rush 
to the nearest convenience store to buy milk. But it's also a good backup to have for an emergency. If you do that, just be sure to use, uh, especially with UHT milk, just be sure to use and replace it regularly. It has a pretty long shelf life, but it does go off. Not necessarily bad per se, but it can curdle and it gets quite lumpy, a bit like cottage cheese, and it's really not nice. If it's too far past its best before date and it's curdled like that, I usually just put it on the garden. I'm just saying, folks. The last 18 months, Australia has been hit by bushfires. We've had a pandemic. We've had lockdowns. We've had massive unemployment. Now we have floods. And supermarket shelves have repeatedly emptied during this time because people panic. They don't prepare. They haven't learnt their lesson. Keep your pantry stocked and you don't need to panic. You don't need to panic by. In an emergency, you can concentrate on putting your emergency plans into place, especially if you live in a bushfire zone or a flood zone. Having an emergency plan just makes sense, guys. I've talked about this before. Now, someone's going to say that keeping a pantry full if you get flooded out or burnt out or have to evacuate is pointless. No, no, that's my mother voice. No, it's not. If you do happen to live in an area where you could have to evacuate, you should have an evacuation plan. And that plan should include a way to feed yourself and your family and your pets. Um, now, that plan in that plan, you could have a, um, a way to move some of your pantry. I know it's not feasible to move all of it, especially in an emergency evacuation, but bushfires and floods don't just happen. You do have some warning. Now, I've lived in both zones. I've lived in bushfire zones. I've lived in flood zones and we've been flooded in for up to a week so I know the other thing it's wise to keep and I've covered this before too is a detailed inventory of what you have in your pantry and in this instance your pantry would include what's in the cupboards what's in the fridges the freezers on the shelves to hand over to your insurance company if you need to make a claim you can go over to the Cheapskates Club website and print out the inventory I use. I'll put a link underneath after the show. Just keep it up to date. Trust me when I say if you have accurate records, your insurance company will love you and processing your claim will be so much easier. So this works if you're flooded in, but your home isn't flooded. If you do need to evacuate due to a flood, and last couple of weeks, lots of people have. After you've sandbagged as much as you can and lifted as much furniture as you can and emptied as many cupboards as you can, if you have time, lift your pantry contents so they are going to be up out of the water. Get them as high as you can. Having your home flooded is devastating. The cleanup is dirty. It's smelly, it's heartbreaking, it's, it's just plain hard work. If you've managed to lift or save some of your pantry, then you won't have to be worrying about food because the chances are those supermarkets won't only be empty, but they'll be closed. Um, on that note... Chances are the power will go out at some time, whether it's a bushfire or a flood emergency, tornado, cyclone, whatever. So this, you know, means that while your home may above be above the flood level or out of the fire zone, you may not have the power to cook or heat water or see in the dark. So you need to be aware of this and think about what you'll do for power while the power's out. Portable camping stoves are inexpensive. Around $20 from camping shops. You can get them from some of the bigger discount department stores. 
They run on little replaceable gas cylinders and they do a great job. Now we have two single burner camp stoves and that's more than enough to heat food and water in an emergency. Um, you'll also need some form of lighting. Now, I've heard people just say candles. Well, candles are lovely and they're romantic and they can smell nice. But if you have pets or you have small children or you like to leave the windows open, the curtains blow, they're just not practical and they're just not safe. So think about torches or solar garden lights you can use for a, a few hours after dark. Headlamps are great for freeing up your hands and still giving you light. And they are, they're not very expensive either. I think ours are about $5 from Anaconda. Anaconda. I was going to say Kathmandu, but it was Anaconda. Really inexpensive. You can get them all over the place. And they give off great light. So those few things, there's only a couple, will make living through a, a flood or, or some sort of natural disaster just a little easier for you. I was talking to a friend last Tuesday and she was saying how her daughter and her four children were flooded in. She showed me photos. And while the house was fine and it was up out of the water, as she said her daughter had nothing in the house and the supermarket was closed. No, it's closed mainly because it was empty and the trucks couldn't get through. I tried to be sympathetic. I really did. I really, really did. But I was more frustrated because this young woman knows she lives in a flood zone and she knows there's a chance they'll be cut off, they'll be flooded in, they won't be able to get to supermarkets or stores and she still doesn't keep enough food in the house to last even a weekend. People, if you don't think it's worth keeping even a few extra days of basics in the pantry, think again. It doesn't take much to cause a run on supermarkets and for shelves to empty really quickly. People of Brisbane found that out yesterday. We here in Melbourne have found it out before. All over Australia, we know what that's like. Take responsibility for yourself and your family. Don't wait for someone else to help you, someone else to feed you, someone else to house you, someone else to clothe you, because in an emergency, there will be thousands of others all wanting the same help from the same limited resources. I don't want this show to be about being scared and I don't want you to sound like I'm I'm preaching at you but I do want you to understand that it's about being prepared for whatever life throws at you. Even if you don't live in a flood zone, think about what could cause your supermarkets to empty. You know, Brisbane, another three-day lockdown supermarkets emptied within hours now i have to say i smiled well, i probably grinned like a loon when i read rosalind's post over on cheapskates chatter she posted that she didn't even know her city was going into lockdown yesterday until after it was already it was a done deed it had already happened but she wasn't concerned at all because she has a full pantry full fridge full freezer she has enough pet food for a couple of weeks. Empty supermarket shelves won't worry her because she keeps her pantry full and she prepares. So don't be scared. Be prepared. Just be prepared. It doesn't take much. It doesn't need to cost a lot. And you don't need to go to extremes. You don't need to... Um, build, you know, massive um, storage rooms and buy years and years of long life, you know, prepackaged cryovac dried foods or anything. You just need to be a little bit sensible. Think about what you use on a regular basis, what you eat every week, the peanut butter, the wheat bix, the milk, the tuna or whatever. And keep a little extra. This isn't about building a stockpile. That's a totally different topic that I've talked about lots of times. This is about keeping your pantry, just your pantry full, so that 
in an emergency, in a crisis, whatever that might be, you don't have to panic about eating or keeping your, keeping your home clean, being able to do the washing, whatever it is. So don't panic, just be prepared. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. If you liked the show, please give us a thumbs up. It's um, just underneath me there. If you haven't already subscribed, please hit that subscribe button, then hit the little bell icon and you'll be notified every time we do a new show. And if you know someone who might benefit from the show, what I've had to say, or from knowing about the Cheapskates Club, please use the share button to send them a link. The more people that know about us, the faster we grow, the easier it is to spread the message that we can live life debt-free, cashed up and laughing. And that's what we want to do. I'll be back next Tuesday, same time, with another show. I hope you can join us again. Have a lovely weekend, everyone. Enjoy your Easter if you are traveling, please take care and I'll see you next week. Thank you so much.